several. Um, I mean, I think to me the most underreported story in this country is the um, historical injustice in Palestine. I say to someone who um, spent my entire life, uh, well, my entire adult life, uh, working on this issue. I think most Americans um, have no idea what is the history of the conflict. I think there are more people who think that the Jews are the victims. Um, I think if I told someone that um, this youth organizer was targeted and, and assassinated last night um, outside his home, that people will uh, resort to the blaming the victim narrative and say we must have done something wrong because it was the Israeli military and Israel is surrounded by all those Arabs who are questioning its existence. So even for me as someone who um, is Israeli and Jewish and a daughter of a Holocaust survivor and I served in the military, even with all those credentials, I still find myself um, on the defensive. Um, oh, and having done research on this topic for, you know, over three decades, 35 years now, because um, people only hear about the conflict when it escalates. Uh, people imagine that it is this large battlefield. Um, and, uh, and Americans, those who are aware of how much money the U.S. Um, gives Israel feel invested and of course support the U.S. ally. It's always been the case with people supporting uh, U.S. foreign policy. Those who are not aware have a voice well biased because it's Western and there is, you know, ingrained, ingrained racism uh, and particularly Islamophobia and the kind of fear of the Arabs that Hollywood helped uh, cement. So I, I, I think without a doubt the reporting on Palestine, I think um, until the past few years, I would say that um, campus sexual assault has been underreported, sexual harassment has been underreported. Now that we have a predator uh, in the White House, um, we saw an example of heightened media attention to these issues. But it's not always good. The media was saturated, but then he was elected. So what does it tell us about um, how society holds accountable people who break the law and behave badly? In this case, it was rewarded. So the media saturation, from a survivor's perspective, um, was adding insult to injury because people were we triggered in the process um, hoped that there will be some type of accountability and then watched as the country elected a president who um, admitted on camera to disrespecting and violating um, women. Third, if I have to think of a third story I would say it's not that it's underreported, I think it's distorted, and that is the, the whole issue of reproductive rights. I think uh, one way to distort an issue is to present it as controversial. Here, Palestine is similar to the reproductive rights debate. So you, you make it look like it's polarizing, um, especially when religion is involved, that adds a whole other dimension. People kind of make it look like Palestine is about religion, which is not, and, and neither is um, 
the reproductive rights debate because you have Catholics for choice. So just, yeah, people have used religion as a weapon to mobilize people against choice, but it's not a religious issue. But it was presented as such. So then, uh, as a result, even when you go to a class on this campus and you ask students what percent of Planned Parenthood funding goes to abortion, most people don't know. It's, you know, less than 4%. Um, but what the underreporting, misreporting has done is that it created a climate whereby it's easy now for politicians like uh, Vice President Mike Pence to threaten healthcare providers who um, are responsible for everything from annual screening for women and girls to a birth control uh, to, to threaten to strip them of all funding if they also perform abortion. And this is something that most people don't know uh, because they're being mobilized under opposed abortion. They don't realize it's all in the same basket and that the most vulnerable people in our community are going to lose all access to health care. So you're not going to, you're going to have um, more um, women uh, with breast cancer or ovarian cri uh, crisis that get now diagnosed for free in those um, local clinics go um, undiagnosed. Uh, and, and to me, this is an issue that is not complicated to report about. Um, and it's now. Th there were some stories this past um, week, uh, but they get presented as human interest story. That's a very interesting in angle. I don't know if you have it in your project, because you present the human story and then people empathize with it. The problem is that if you don't provide a context and if there's no systemic analysis with it, the human interest story is treated as an anomaly and you take a systemic problem and you personify it or personalize it. Um, and, and you lose the context, and without the context, you cannot have people who mobilize to, um, to take action.